Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help our channel and it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering in today's video is we're going to be looking at statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we are going to be finding reactions. And this will be our seventh part in this series. So what we have going on here is that we have this forklift shown here with dimensions. And it says a 2,800 kilogram forklift is used to lift a 1,500 kilogram crate. Determine the reaction at each of the two front wheels and at the two rear wheels at B. So we have two parts here, A and B. But before we begin, we have to turn our kilogram units into kilonewton units. So for the forklift weight, we are going to have the 28. 100 kilograms, and we're going to multiply that by 9.81 meters per second squared, and that gives us a total of 27,468 kilonewtons, or newtons, and we're just going to turn that into kilonewtons by dividing by 1,000, and we end up with 27.468 kilonewtons. And we're just going to repeat that same process for the crate, so it's 1,500 uh, kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, and that will give us a total of 14,715 newtons. Once again, convert that into kilonewtons, so divide it by 1,000. So we end up with 14.715. And you could lay, uh, leave these in newtons, but using the smaller numbers, a little bit easier to write out. So what we have here at G is the crate weight, which is, let's see, that's the 1,500. So that'll be the 14.715 kilonewtons right here. And then we have the forklift um, weight, which is going to be the 27.468 kilonewtons. So <laughs> hopefully you can read that 27.46 in there, kind of hard. Um, so what we're gonna do with part A. Part A is says, uh, determine the reaction at the front wheel. So we can imagine these two wheels as roller supports for each of these, because well, rollers are just essentially wheels and that's what the forklift is running on. So I'm going to assume that we have our reaction of AY going upward and our reaction of BY going upward because otherwise the forklift is <laughs> floating or tipping over if the reactions are not going in that direction. So we're going to assume that everything's okay. And we're going to uh, determine um, AY first at the front wheels. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to sum moments at uh, the B axis and that all has to be in equilibrium, so it all has to be equal to zero. And B axis, I mean the axle of the actual wheels. So <clears throat> we're just going to have three forces here. So we're going to have our crate weight, which would be the 14.715 kilonewtons times its total distance to get it over to point B, which is 0.4 plus 0.6 plus 0.3, which gives me 1.3 meters. It will be rotating counterclockwise, and I'm taking counterclockwise as positive, so it is a positive number. And then we're going to have minus AY, since it will be rotating clockwise about point B the way I have it drawn. And its total distance over to point B is 0 0.9 meters. And then lastly, we have our forklift weight, which is the 27.468 with a total distance of 0.3 meters to B and that will be positive based upon its rotation about that point. And that's all we have about point B. So we can rearrange and solve for AY, pretty simplistic equation to do so. And when you do this, AY will pop out to be 30.41 kilonewtons. Came out to be a positive number, so I know my assumed arrow direction of up is correct. Now, what the problem is asking is it's asking for the reaction at each of the two front wheels. This is just the total axle reaction that is happening. This has to be distributed to two wheels. So the answer for each wheel will just be a Y divided by two. So we would have our 30.41 kilonewtons divided by two wheels, because it says there are two wheels, is equal to 15 point two one kilonewtons in that upward direction for each wheel in the front. So that's how you would do the first part. And then the second part, you can do almost exactly the same. You have two options how to solve for the wheels at B. You can sum moments at A 
and get V sub Y and then divide by two. Or what you could do is that you could sum forces in the vertical direction, the Y direction, because now you have AY and then you could solve for BY. Same, same uh, answer should be given for both of those in the end. But what we're gonna do is that we are just going to do the second part um, very similar to the way we did the first part. And we're just gonna sum moments about B or about A to get B sub Y. Once again, I said you could sum forces vertically. That's perfectly fine as well. So summing moments about A counterclockwise is positive. So we would have, once again, the 14.715. It would be positive rotating counterclockwise about A. Its distance is 0.4 meters to A. A sub Y, don't include it. And then our weight from our forklift will be rotating clockwise. So that would be minus 27.468 times 0 0.6 meters. And then B sub Y, the way I have it drawn, will be rotating counterclockwise. So it will be positive B sub Y times 0 0.9. And that's all I have equal to zero. Well, easy equation to solve there. B sub Y is your only unknown. So rearrange and solve for it. And B sub Y will pop out to be 11.5. 7, 7 kilonewtons count to be a positive number. So I know my original arrow direction of up was correct. So both wheels are in fact in contact with the ground. So once again, this is just for the total uh, wheels at B and it's asking for each wheel. So once again, there are just two wheels back there. So you're going to take your B sub Y and you're going to divide it by two. So 11.77 kilonewtons over two, which gives us five, 0.89 kilonewtons in that upward direction for each wheel. And that's how you would uh, work that problem uh, going for part A and for part B. Now with most reaction problems, there's always a way to check your answers. Make sure that you didn't screw up a number somewhere or punch a number wrong into your calculator when you're calculating this out. And usually that means summing moments at a point that you haven't done so already. But with this one, as I said, for part B, there's two methods that you can use. Since you know A sub Y from the first part, you could have summed forces in the vertical direction or summed moments. Well, we summed moments. So for our check, let's go ahead and let's use that vertical summation to, uh, to do our check to make sure that we have AY and BY correct here. So we are going to sum vertical forces, and they all have to be in equilibrium, so they all have to cancel to be zero because we don't want this forklift moving vertically. So we would have our crate weight, which would be going downward. So it's minus 14.1 or 0.715 kilonewtons. And then we would have our forklift weight, which is going downward. So 27.468 kilonewtons. And then we would have our total wheels at the front of 30.4 upward, and then plus the total amount of the wheels in the back, which is 11.77 kilonewtons up. So we would add both of those in there, 30.14, and then plus the 11.77. And that should be close to zero. Well, we end up getting minus 0 0.003. Ah, so we didn't get exactly zero. So what do we do? Well, nothing really, because that is really, really close to zero. The only reason it is not zero is because, well, look at our answers. We had rounding. We rounded off our answers. So that's why that is not exactly zero. That is super close to zero. So that is good enough. Now, if you wanted to get exactly zero for that check, you just go back and you would get AY to the exact decimal point and BY to the exact decimal point, And then you would get exactly zero. But being 0 0.003, when my answers are 30, and 11, 0 0.003 over 11.77 is a very, very small percentage. So that is good enough. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more Problem Solvers Friday, please check out the other videos on our channels we're trying to upload daily. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that really does help us out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.